Hi guys, Ray from LoveYourRV.com here once again. It's kind of a rainy, dreary day up here on Vancouver Island, so I thought I'd chat about internet because uh, that's what I do on a rainy, dreary day, surf the internet, stream stuff. So, um, back in December I installed the WineGuard Connect Wi-Fi extender, so I'm back now with my review. So that's a good five and a half months of using the thing. So I think I've got a pretty good grasp on, on how it's working. Um, I really wanted to wait this long to get back to this park on Vancouver Island because we've been here three years in a row now, so I'm really familiar with how the Wi-Fi works here. Um, we, we get the campground Wi-Fi, we pay for premium. Um, the antenna for that Wi-Fi is right at our site almost, so that's super strong. But we also hook on to a Wi-Fi as a backup when the campground Wi-Fi kind of, sometimes it gets kind of sucky when there's a lot of RVs here and everybody's overloading it. So there's one called Shaw Go or Shaw Open, which is part of Shaw Cable here in Canada. Um, and we can use a, a password and log in from one of our family's uh, homes and get on free Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, that Wi-Fi is a city, it's quite far away and, and fairly weak. They kind of have free city hotspots that you can connect to. So we're a little ways away from where the, where it, the strong signal is. And we could just pick it up here at the campground. So uh, I was really wanting to test the booster here. This is a little booster box you get. Um, if you want to see the install and the setup of the, the WineGuard Connect, I'll leave, it, I'll leave the link in the description. I did that back in December when I installed it on the RV. I'm just kind of here, back here with my review. So, anyway, let's go through some of my likes and dislikes. Um, first of all, the install was super simple. It came with this box, the antenna on the roof, um, a power, power cord, and just one cord to go between the two, the internal antenna amp and the external antennas and amps. Um, and the power went over that cable. It was a, Ethernet cable with what they call power over Ethernet, so I didn't need a power cable for the external amp, so that was nice. Really simple to install. Um, the biggest problem was getting the wire into the rig, and I just snuck it down my uh, refrigerator vent. Um, next was the ex next uh, like is the external um, amplifier amplifier antenna. I really like the the design of it. It's meant to mount flat on the roof versus some that you have to put on a pole somewhere attached to your ladder or your, your TV antenna. This thing mounted with three screws, so it was kind of low profile. And it had three small antennas on it, so I really like that. Um, some people were worried about maybe tree limbs smacking those antennas, but they're pretty low, so if you're going to be hitting tree limbs, you're going to be shearing off your, your AC or your vent cover, stuff like that. Also, the antennas unscrew. They're just done up kind of finger tight, so you could unscrew them if you were really worried about it. Um, next like is uh, setting up the software on, on the thing was super easy. You just went, opened your web browser and had a really simplified uh, setup. You just put in your passwords you wanted to use, what you wanted to call your, your uh, indoor, um, like puts in a private network, so uh, what you want to call your, your Wi-Fi access point. We called ours Hummingbird. We like to use animals for all our stuff. So Hummingbird is what we connect all our devices to. And then I just connect Hummingbird to the Wi-Fi source. Say it's the campground Wi-Fi or sometimes like a casino Wi-Fi or, or in this case the Shaw Open Wi-Fi of the city hotspot. So the setup's dead easy. It's, it's very simple. You can do it on your phone or, or laptop or or a tablet, whatever. Um, next like is mobile devices. So I have a 17-inch laptop. My wife has a big Apple iMac, and they have pretty large antennas built in, so we get pretty good signal strength. Like my 17-inch laptop, it's a Dell laptop. It can pull in signals quite quite far, and it can boost weak signals itself. But when we're trying to connect with our our smartphone, you know, these have a little dinky antenna in them or our, say our iPad, that'll, that'll start to get super weak. So what I've noticed, especially here, is 
the external antenna will take that, that Wi-Fi from outside and boost it up and then it rebroadcasts it in RV. So all of a sudden I go from barely being able to get a signal on my phone to getting a really super strong signal on my phone. So that's awesome for mobile devices. It's been really good for that. Also, we can share, all the devices share one connection. So that's really handy if you go to a campground and they give you just one code. They say, oh, we have free Wi-Fi, yay. And they say, here's your code. So, you know, everybody's got five or six devices nowadays. You know, we have a smart TV and cell phones and tablets and stuff. And I even have a little Chromecast for my TV. So with one code, you know, you can only use one device. But by using the, the LineGuard Connect, I hook to the, the, that code into that. And then it shares to all the, all the things inside. So that's really handy. Also, all the devices will remember, say, um, we call it Hummingbird, so they automatically will connect to Hummingbird, so I just have to go in, set that one thing when we come to a new spot. Say I arrive at a casino and they go, oh, we have free Wi-Fi, so I just go into Hummingbird's setup panel, connect that, and bang, all our, all our devices are online. So that's been really cool. Uh, next thing is the, the box itself. Um, when you go in, you can update the firmware um, right through the admin panel. So I, every once in a while I can go in and see if they have a new software update. So they can add features or fix bugs and it's really easy. You just click in there, update firmware, down, downloads the new firmware and installs it. So that's really cool. I like that. And also in here is a router. And so that puts a, a, a router between you and say the campground Wi-Fi and adds a good, a good layer of security. I think there's a little firewall built into this. I wouldn't totally trust it. You know, it's still public Wi-Fi you're connecting to, but it's better than connecting all your devices straight to that Wi-Fi. It kind of has a little layer of protection in between. So you have your private network um, where your devices can share between each other, and then this lies between your private, say, in your RV network and the, the public network. And finally, WineGuard has, has been making RV stuff for a long time, so they have a good reputation. I think this is their first foray into uh, Wi-Fi. They've been big in uh, TV antennas. We have the WineGuard sensor antenna on our roof um, with the digital add-on. They also make satellite systems. I don't have much, much uh, experience with that. We don't, we don't do satellite stuff, but at least they're a, an American company based in the U.S., I'm not sure. This says assembled in the U.S., not made in the U.S. So, but at least uh, they have good support that way, you know, compared to a offshore brand. So that's my likes. Um, here's the the dislikes that I came up with. Um, the first thing I noticed right away was no 12 volt adapter. Um, this thing just came with a thing to plug into to an AC socket. So right away I'm like, oh. I go off grid camping. I'm going to have to put, you know, run a cord to my inverter. So most things, you know, my cell booster came with a with a 12 volt adapter. So to get around that, um, I installed what they call a DC to DC converter. This thing runs on 24 volts. Um, I think it says 1.67 amps. So I got a 3 amp 12 volt to 24 volt DC to DC converter. And so I hooked it up and put a switch on it so I can switch this on and off. Then I, then I don't have to worry about when I'm boondocking. It will run straight off my batteries. I don't have to be, you know, putting it through the inverter, having the inverter turned on. It just automatically works all the time. And I put a little switch in it so when I'm not using it, you know, if I'm way off in the, in the boonies, I'm not going to be connecting to any Wi-Fi sources so I can turn it off so it's not wasting my battery power. <clears throat> Um, next, uh, dislike, not so much for me, but uh, I know a lot of guys are super techy and want to play with all the features a router will have. Well, this router here is pretty limited in, in uh, what you can get in and change in your admin panel. Like, you can play around with, with some stuff, but uh, compared to other, other uh, market competitors, like, say, for instance, the Wi-Fi Ranger is a popular one. 
Um, I've never used it myself, but just looking online at their admin panels and watching a few videos on it, it's much more in depth. So for techie people, they would they would rather go that way. Um, if you're not too techie, this might maybe that's why WineGuard kind of simplified this down, kind of dumbed it down, so it's really easy to use versus a lot of features to to dive into. Um, also, I didn't find the documentation that great. Um, uh, they had a little tiny kind of a install manual that was pretty just fluff and I've gone online and watched the videos and they're mostly kind of marketing videos they're not really diving in depth to all the features and and all the specs it's hard to find all the in-depth specs on it so hopefully they'll improve on that and then finally um, judging by the comments I got and my own opinion it's pretty overpriced it's this, the, the unit goes for $549, so that's pretty hefty. Our previous unit, which was made by Jeff Atek, I bought it like five or six years ago, but I think I got the antenna and the unit all together for about $200. And I know I pretty well all the other market competitors are lower than this. I don't see anything that this does super fantastic that justifies the price. Other than it's really simple to install, really simple to set up, and comes in a really nice packaging. So um, that's about it. So uh, let's give some final thoughts here on it. So in conclusion, I hope you found my observations useful. If you're considering a Wi-Fi extender, uh, the WineGuard Connect definitely worked really well. Um, for five and a half months, we used it. I uh, used it in several uh, people's driveways, friends' driveways, where we would uh, park and get on their free Wi-Fi from inside their house. And it, it enabled us to grab that weak, weaker outside Wi-Fi and, and have it nice and strong in our rig. Also, a few casinos worked really well, where we're parked quite away from the, the main buildings. And in campgrounds where, where, we, where the signal was weak, it did work quite well. Honestly, though, a lot of campground, the Wi-Fi sucks, so it didn't make much difference if you boost a weak signal, a, weak, a slow signal, because too many people are on it doesn't help. But overall, I give it uh, good marks for, for quality, simple to use, simple to install, and it works quite well. Um, the only downside is the price. It seems a little bit too expensive, so uh, there you go. If, if you're willing to spend the extra money, it's worth it. But uh, especially for guys who are, are really techy, they might want to, you know, look at cobbling together their own system. Um, the one other big market leader is called the Wi-Fi Ranger. They've offered to send me out one for review. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to or not. But if I do, I'll, I'll come back and we can do some comparisons between the two. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Angie and I are going to cuddle in here for a, for a wet uh, spring day, maybe do some streaming video. Cheers!